Hi everyone, Altwin here for FDev and today we're going to take a look to procedural mesh in Unreal Engine and uh, how to use it in C++. I've realized online there was mostly only this uh, very uh, straight to the point on how to set up a procedural mesh in uh, Unreal Engine, but when it comes to actually create some uh, interesting uh, things with procedural mesh and C++ and how they actually work in the context of Unreal Engine uh, There was not a lot of things uh, popping around uh, I know you could uh, use blueprint to create those kind of stuff But uh, today I want to go and go into like a straight vanilla ja uh, straight vanilla C++ All right, so I'm going to follow uh, this uh, from the wiki on real and you can uh, check the YouTube link description and it's going to be linked so you can uh, open it and see how you can uh, set up a project. I've already set it up a bunch of uh, procedural geometry but what I'm going to do uh, is just create a new project because I want to go from uh, from scratch. So when you will uh, open the Unreal editor, you will have a new project and you want to click to C++. Uh, I'm going to leave it to basic code, but you can also uh, select uh, any template you want. They are going to prompt you for uh, for a name of the project, so I'm going to call it uh, YouTube Procedural Geometry. Geometry. Procedural. Okay, I guess there's a limit. Oh, long, no longer than 20. Okay, YouTube Procedural Pros Mesh. When I say uh, procedural geometry, I uh, refer to procedural meshes for sure. So um, what I'm going to do is then uh, create project and uh, I'm going to be um, waiting and I'm going to have a new editor loaded with a visual, uh, visual Studio solution. No worries, it can take a few minutes if you are running on a low uh, computer system like I'm doing right now at home. Um, but once your project is going to be loaded, you're mostly going to have a new uh, Unreal Engine scene, but also a Visual Studio project that is going to have the name of the YouTube process procedural meshes. Uh, what we want to take a look at is this file here and this folder. And we have a procedural mesh.cpp and a game mode base. We don't really need to care uh, about those in this video. Uh, there's definitely a lot of resources online if you want to take a look on how plugins and uh, custom project works in Unreal Engine. But right now I'm just going to focus on um, on procedural meshes. So um, to set up the procedural mesh, you need to um, to include it into the uh, build CS. So you could copy paste this, but uh, what we want is basically just this dependencies, which is procedural mesh components. So if you go back to uh, this and um, open the C-sharp and you can uh, simply add it at the end. So add the procedural mesh components. As mentioned, if you want to make a plugin and stuff, you might want to read on a private versus public dependence size uh, module name. Okay, once this is included, uh, the next thing you need, as they say, uh, into your U project, you need to add um, additional dependencies. So if you go to the U project, uh, there's going to have some modules, and uh, you want to add after modules, uh, add these and load it as an array. Oh, my keyboard is in French. Sorry, multi multi language here. Not super good. Them seems like I can't. Oh, okay, all right, we got it. So you want to have the uh, procedural mesh component and then rebuild the project. So if you build, you might be good to go to actually create a new procedural mesh. So building the project can take a few times for the first time, but uh, <clears throat> once all of this is, is done, you would basically have a build one succeeded. You can hot reload and no worries the uh, the Unreal Engine is taking care of hot reloading the project. You don't have to close the editor and reopen it. And uh, what you want to do is create a new 
a new C++ class as they also indicate into this uh, this this uh, this very straight to the point setting up so uh, let's have a new C++ class so we're gonna go we're gonna create an actor and let's leave it to my actor for now just because it's uh, it will be easier and uh, the first thing you're going to uh, to want to do is to include procedural mesh into your actor.cpp class. So once the class is going to be generated, uh, go back into your Visual Studio project, and you want to reload because uh, some of the stuff has changed. And you will see myhacker.cpp and myhacker.h. Uh, for now, you will need to define some stuff that are not uh, included into the .h file. And we could just copy paste. So um, what you will do is uh, basically myhacker.generated will be there, but you need to include the procedural mesh components either. And uh, so inside, I don't think it comes with a private no it doesn't come with a private so you could just uh, load basically what you do what we do here we define a private class member with uh, visible anywhere uh, which is the uh, the, the Unreal Engine uh, macros and we have a procedural mesh component pointer pointing to a mesh you could also define this to my procedural mesh or pretty much what you want but I'm gonna leave it to mesh for now uh, inside of your CPP file well this is a lot of code and uh, we're gonna go step by step no worries but uh, inside your main.cpp you wanna copy paste this and you will have a bunch of errors notably because uh, post actor created post load and create triangles are not defined into your header file so I'm gonna go super messy and just copy paste uh, inside of here and I could leave it to public and I'm gonna go and remove this one and simply like declare some uh, some of those okay because uh, they are not declared by default in the header file so I can remove this and uh, we don't need to create triangle actually we, we don't need uh, my actor reference so if we build we might be probably be good to go will we be good to go that's the question I'm always asking myself when creating those oh no procedural mesh component dot h okay let's go my a my actor my oh, okay that's cool because they, they already find a constructor so Ah, okay, I get it. So basically, you could uh, to to make sure everything is cool. I'm just gonna copy paste what the references from the Unreal Engine wiki gave us, and copy paste it into the constructor. Delete my constructor, and just to make sure everything is cool, I'm gonna go to my .h and make sure I don't have a double constructor here. Okay, should be good to build right now. Right click build. And normally you will hear you will hear this kind of little sounds if the builds are good. All right, so okay, we don't have any build error. We could just go drag and drop, and now we see bam, we have our procedural mesh, which is not truly really procedural because it's simply a triangle. But what we need to do is take a look to the code underneath this triangle. If you are uh, Going to my hacker.cpp, you can actually that after the post actor create. So this is the call when hacker spawn at runtime or drop into the world editor. Uh, you call the the super and uh, post actor created, and they call the function uh, create triangles, right? And here it is where we define the procedural mesh. So now we're good to go. And in the next video, uh, I'm gonna go into how we can actually uh, create some nice stuff such as like grades and actually define uh, how our vertexes are registered to triangle and stuff because for now it's super boring but there's a lot of things uh, you want to take care when you when you create some uh, procedural meshes in Unreal notably 
uh, you can see that for now, 0, 1, and 2 are actually counterclockwise. So if you register them, uh, 0, 2, 1, is that it? Regist registering them uh, uh, clockwise would actually flip the normals to the other side. So if I uh, compile, my computer is so slow. I don't know why. Need to. Okay. If I drag and drop, now you can see that we have the same shape, but the normals have been flipped. And that's because we registered uh, the triangles uh, counterclockwise. And this is what we're going to take a look into the next uh, kind of video. So basically how we, we can add another triangle by basically uh, calling vertices.had, okay, which is just an array, and adding a head vector, a tree, which basically we can define a triangle, I don't know, at like 100, for or maybe let's flip to zero and 100 and uh you know what let's copy paste this one because we already have a triangle and we can start to mess around to actually oops sorry uh we can start to mess around so instead of having a 100 by 100 triangle we can have a 250 by 100 and delete these one and uh, therefore get back to registering to zero one two compile mm, and uh, we should have a bigger triangle that won't be uh, with the same the same uh, size angles okay if we drag and drop all right then you see we have just registered our custom so we have a uh, vertex zero zero zero. We have a uh, two hundred fifty and a hundred, and why? Okay, sorry.